Thank you. My name is Venkatesh. Um, I am going to present about MySQL replication, about uh, the new things that we actually added in 8.0. This is the safe harbor. What it means is whatever we are going to tell you, later you cannot sue us. You are on your own. You have to do the testing before it goes into the production. From morning, you've been listening many things about MySQL 8.0, and if you observe, every presentation will have something to do with the replication. So we, we are the heart of the MySQL. And we have so many features that we added, and you can say there is no debate. It's never too late to replicate with version 8. So we have divided the features into these categories, performance related, monitoring related, operations related, and many more we have added, which we cannot cover it in the, the time that we have got. So I, will, I have just one slide to explain other features. This is the typical replication picture. Before 5.7, it used to be just one particular node, and then there is a link between this. Now that we have group replication, we can have a picture like this. Every particular one, you have a cluster of nodes which represents the group replication. The link between this cluster and this cluster is asynchronous replication. And I'm going to talk about asynchronous replication. And there is a presentation at 3 o'clock that talks about group replication between these clusters. Yeah, so you can put anywhere in the world, and then asynchronous replication will work across them. OK. Um, so this is how, just to give the background, how replication works. Um, you have master, and you have a replica here. Uh, uh, by the way, we change the terminologies of uh, replication-related terminologies, few things. So I will be telling you whenever we are, I'm using a new word. So we are going to use a replica word instead of slave word. So if you see in the documentation of 8.0, you'll start seeing few new words, especially related to replication. So if I say replica, it is nothing but the slave that we have. There is no other technology that changes, just the terminology that we change. So this is the master, and this is the slave. You write something here that goes to the binary log over the network. It goes to uh, the relay log, which will be picked up the receiver thread, which is the old one is IO thread if you're familiar with the old terminology. We call it as receiver thread now. So the receiver thread picks it from the network, put it in the relay log, and then the applier threads, which the old terminology is SQL threads, which applier threads will pick it up from the relay log, puts it on the replica, and then if the replica has uh, log slave updates enabled, we will write it on its own binary log of the replica. If there is no enable, there is no binary log here. So this is how it's uh, the regular replication happens. OK, so my main concentration for the first feature will be on the replica side. So that's the reason I have removed the other part of the picture. So this uh, one that we, so what happens is you have the packets. They are coming through the network. And there is a coordinated thread that picks up and then puts it on the parallel worker queues. And worker threads will be taking it, and then they will be getting applied on the replica. This is the typical how master replica uh, happens. Uh, so this is, if you have enabled the parallel threads, that's how you look. Otherwise, it's going to be just the relay log will directly pick, and then a player thread will pick it, and then put it on the replica. There is This diagram will not be there. So this, so that's the background. Now coming to the, so a replica can apply more transactions in parallel. That's there in 5.6, that's there in 5.7. And we have improved more 
uh, in the, on the same area in eight dot o what we have done i'll show you so in five six what is the parallelism that you can achieve you can achieve the parallelism based on the database so uh, any anything related to db1 it will go to worker thread 1 anything related to db2 it will go to worker thread 2 so if there is no transactions that based on db2 there was worker thread 2 will be sitting idle forever if there are no transactions so we can do much better in 57 what we have done is on the master if if these are the three transactions that happened exactly at the same time they are all three of them are there in the commit phase at the same time we can 100% sure that they are not conflicting because that's the reason they were there in the commit time at the same time so on the master we were able to take all these three and then put it on uh, parallelly execute them on 57 so we can still do a further more uh, parallelism here because these three transactions should happen only after this even though there are no these things are not conflicting with them so that the improvisation is done here in 8.0 so what we are doing is we know which transaction depends on what tuples that information we already have now that information with using that information what we can do is if you increase the par uh, parallel threads on the slave and then we'll see okay there is one two three and four so we can actually do a parallelism on all these things let's say the next one is just the row five and you have five threads running on the slave we still be able to take all these things and then execute them parallelly as long as there is a thread and there is, there is something that is not conflicting we will be able to achieve it so that's the thing that's the reason in, in fact if you have more parallel threads on the slave you can even achieve much more performance on the slave than the primary okay how do you do it how do you enable it so there is uh, a parallel works parallel type these two are the common in 57 also so what we are uh, in 57 also you can achieve the same thing using logical clock and this is the main important thing that we have added the transaction dependency tracking should be at the right set so based on the right set we are doing it now in 8.0 so if you if you enable it this one it's going to be the one that i told you if you don't have this it's going to be the behavior of 57 and uh, for this right set to work the slave pressure commit order is equal to one is uh, what we have we must be used and uh, the slave pressure commit order is nothing but it maintains the commit order of the master on the on the replica so what we are doing is uh, let's say you have transaction one and transaction two even though they are not conflicting we should be able to parallelly execute them on the replica but uh, there are some applications where you don't want a state on the replica which doesn't exist at all on the master for example transaction one is not yet executed but transaction two is done some application doesn't want that to happen they want the transaction one followed by the transaction two so that's why you have to set the slave pressure commit order one for um, you will achieve the same behavior and this is one more thing uh, performance related which is you don't have to set anything it's just um, uh, by default the code is the enabled so what uh, we have observed is the relay log is being picked up by the uh, re will be written uh, receiver thread is writing something to the relay log file and these coordinator thread also reading it from the same same file we are seeing a lot of contention there are a lot of log related issues which is reducing the performance so what we have done is we have done a lot of code uh, improvements there which will give you a huge performance difference when 5728.0 so this is this is one more point that we, we, we say that, okay, you can upgrade to 8.2 if you are using the 5.7. And this, you don't have to set any variables here. Okay, and uh, in 5.7, we have introduced JSON in MySQL. And uh, in replication, the, in 5.7, what happens is you update a JSON document. Um, so the full document, if, if the JSON is a kind of a 1 MB or 10 MB, if you modify one particular attribute, the full data is getting transferred from master to replica, which nobody wants it, obviously. So what we have done a new improvement in 8.0, if this is the only thing that you're actually modifying it, only that particular thing we will be transferring it. There are settings if you want for some reason, for example, no, we don't want only that particular thing because we have some special mechanism of replica relay logs we want to full json document that is by default but if you want this particular behavior to happen we have settings 
So, this is the setting that you have to do. This is the minimal which exists in even 5 5, where you have to say only modified columns you have to transfer. So, that you have to anyways trans set it. Even in the modified columns, if there is a JSON and you want only the partial JSON which you actually modified, then you have to set this. Bin log row value options is par partial JSON. So, you have to set this to make that enable. The same applica applicable for the other functions. Okay, so there are many more performance related features that I will cover at the end of the slide, but these are the important ones. So, the next section is monitoring. Um, many people now in 5, 7, starting from 5, 7, many people are converted to RBR. Nobody uses, very less people use SBR, statement based replication. But in the RBR, the main problem, main issues that we receive from the community is the replica is hanging there. We don't know what is happening. Is it that it, the long running query it is getting executed or is it that, you know, uh, what is the query that is running? All those information is not there in 5.7. So we have, we have improved upon the same area, which is you can still see what is happening and you can see what is the query in 8.0. How do you do it? So this is the, um, now in um, a threads table, if you see the process thing, you, uh, earlier it was kind of saying that row event. That's how you see in 5.7. But now you can clearly see the query. What exactly you have done it on the master, you can clearly see. Insert into T1 values, 1, 2, 3, in RBR. That's the, and um, um, so let's say what we have done is every DML, every DDL, internally we have some stages. Um, in the process list, if you are fam familiar with process list table, there is a, a column called info that will tell you uh, it is taking system log, it is going so and so work, but still that will not give you how much percentage is of the query is done, how much more is done, that information is not there. Now we have added um, in event stays current table where you can say that, okay, the this is the query that is happening and the work completed is 1% of total four. So 25 percent is done and then 75 percent is what we have estimated. So you keep checking this status and then see, okay, my uh, replica is not hanging, it's progressing. If you see this one is improved, two, three like that. So you can see the process now, or progress now. Okay, another monitoring related things are typically in the real, real time, you don't have just A, B. You will have a lot of nodes in the replication chain. We never had any anything to like, we always referred uh, uh, what is the lag of D with respect to, to A, the original one. We never had, okay, what's the immediate one? Is it that the, it really received machine C a long back or is it just that it received, was, where is the problem? Is it between B to C or is it between C to D? All those monitoring was next to impossible till 5.7. But what we have done is we have introduced the concept of uh, so, so this is what I was saying. So here we don't know when it is actually added, when it is coordinator thread picked up, when it is the worker queues picked up, all those things are not there. So what we have done is we have introduced a lot of hooks that's called in monitoring um, all these places and then we have introduced the new terminologies which is you call it as this particular, let's say an event is originated on A. We call that as the event timestamp is original commit timestamp. If you see an event name with original commit timestamp, it is actually the one that is actually started. And C, which we called as for this D, this is immediate commit timestamp. So if you see some information on D with these two, you can say that, okay, it is actually C immediate com commit timestamp and then it is actually started long time back on A. That information is there now. And uh, f for various steps here, like when it is added, when is it done, when is it executed, all these things we have a performance schema related queries where you can give transaction latency versus primary, you can compare and uh, last hop, when was it actually happened and when it is actually added, when is the worker queue that you actually picked up and you can see when is it added to the work queue, worker queue, when is the coordinator that that got picked up and then when it's actually the, it came out from the network, when is, the, when is it available in the relay log? And this is when, when, when it is re relay log downloaded it on the replica. 
So all those all those places we have different different information that can be seen from the performance schema table. Next one is related to the operations that is more about the variables that we added and few things that we deleted, removed. And this is multi-source filters, which is the new feature that we added in 5.7. But the problem with this is you have a master one, you have a, a master two, and there is a replica here that is getting uh, data from both the nodes. But if you want to filter some data, there is a concept of replication filters that exists long back. But the problem you you have a filter on this channel that is applicable to this channel as well. It's a global filters. But uh, now in 8.0, we have introduced the concept of per channel replication filters. So you can actually say, no, there is no filter here. Every data is coming from this master to this replica. But there is, like, I don't want anything that comes from the DB users related. I don't want th from this guy. So that kind of per channel replication filters, you can enable it now in 8.0. So we have changed a lot of defaults in 8.0 because of the community feedback that we received. Many people, I mean, in the real time, Nobody will do it without the replication. They want the replication to be enabled. So why uh, an extra step from the DBA is to enable it? So we have done the default. Since log bin now it's uh, uh, off on 5.7 on, on 8.0 by default. Because it is on by default, we have to do a give a value to a server ID. So it is on. So log slave updates is enabled. Expired log days was 0. This is 30 now. So this is the one main important thing that you have to really care in case you don't want those expired log days to be in. So but we have changed it based on the community again. And uh, the information that we store, the, the updates, uh, the uh, metadata information that we store on the replica was actually happening on the file based, which nobody likes nowadays because it's not a crash safe. So we changed the defaults to table now. And the uh, transaction rights at extraction, which is the related to the first feature that I was talking, it is off now, but it is hash will be calculated, which is, uh, uh, this is the name, like XX hash 64. And another performance related things that we change the default based on the bugs that we are receiving. Uh, it is, the default one is index scan and table scan. Many issues were kind of replications la uh, is getting lagged, it is taking too much time. When we debugged, it is nothing but it is taking table scan by default if you don't have an index. So everybody will face it and only after facing it, they're changing it to this. So then we have done a lot of research on it and which is the best value for the default for the many users to work. So that's the reason we changed now to, if there is an index for the query that you're doing, there will be take index scan. Otherwise it is going to be hash scan. It's not a table scan anymore, the default value. These are the new variables that we introduced. Some of them I already covered. So bin log expiry log seconds. There are some users where they do, the data is huge that they can't wait, they can't give expiry logs in days. Like they want it in off day, they want it in one for day. For example, if you take Facebook, it could be that many gigabytes or even terabytes will generate just in off day. They are doing some work like, okay, the, all these particular l binary logs that generated transfer it to some other place and they don't want that to be there on the master even the off day also. So that's the feature. It's actually uh, contributed by the Facebook guys where uh, bin log expired log seconds. Now what you can do is I want two days and off day. Let's say if it is off day, 1800 seconds or whatever it is. So you can mention in, in terms of granularity is now seconds. And uh, bin log row metadata, which is one feature which you, you can enable it if you want an extra information on replica. We are writing all the information now, the table, table columns. Earlier we were not doing anything. We are not writing anything into the binary log. But if you didn't enable this binary log row metadata, many informations about the table related metadata we are writing into the binary log. It, they are available on replicas relay log now. There are some people who actually uh, get the information from the relay log after it received. They are missing all these metadata. So that's the reason we added a new feature where the metadata will be transferred. And uh, this is the one that I related, uh, uh, the one that I told you about the JSON. So you can just say bin log row value options is equal to partial JSON, where only the modified doc, modified attribute of the JSON will be transferred from master to replica. 
and this is the one that I was talking about uh, right set you have to set so that it will be taking the new 8.0 feature of parallelizing the transactions as long as they are not conflicting and um, um, so th as long as they are not conflicting so you should you should have a particular set where you have to compare with if your load is not too much you can just say that okay after 100 tra 100 transactions i'm pretty sure that uh, the conflicting transactions will not happen so you can set it to 100 we will reduce it to 100 and then oh, the conflict resolution will happen only for those 100 transactions and these are the uh, if you are familiar with the 56 57 uh, replication these are the pretty common variables system variables that you use what is the heartbeat period what is uh, last heartbeat that you received uh, all these information is there in the as a variables but since we are going towards the performance schema we actually re removed all of them and then we have replaced with some information in the performance schema so this is information yeah so many more um, earlier uh, we're using the when when the server is disk full there's no way you can execute any of the replication commands because the disk full situation is it's a disk full and it has taken acquired the lock log which is very important when, for the binary log and we were we are making all the commands related to replication to hang till you clear the disk and then do it but if there somebody wants to see what is happening why is it hanging there is there was no way in 57 but in um, 8.0 we added the performance schema related where it doesn't take anything to do with the logs still give you the all the information and so that feature is there and then since atomic ddl in the morning you have heard it from my colleague uh, so since it is there we have done more improvements on the replication side so re recover ddl after cache uh, crash is happening even when you do a replication enable also interoperability which is the one that i was talking about metadata is added now more um, uh, in the binary log and then the transaction byte length also is added that's uh, actually part of uh, the metadata that we have added and uh, earlier in the 5.7 if there is a non empty server you cannot add um, gt support is not is it's not possible to restore it uh, so now even in the non empty server also it's G if you are enabling GT, that still we can do it. You can set some variables so that it works. So that feature is also for all these things. We have a lot of blogs, lot of documentation that we have already written. So you can go through the uh, documentation of MySQL. And uh, the reset master, the specify binary log file is always that reset master will go back to one. The binary log name is going to one which nobody wants it because if they already done 100 the reset master they want it from 101 right so you you have 100 binary logs you actually stored it somewhere uh, because you the master server you don't want to pile up the disk you changed it and then you executed the reset master for some reason it comes back to one nobody wants it because which one that is one you and again you have a one so now there is a new thing reset master two 101 you mention it so the new binary log will be from 101 not from the one um, yeah so this is the one that I was talking with second precision you actually can mention and uh, so for the maintenance purpose we have removed 4.x 5.0 compatibility code there is a huge code related to 5.1 4.0 and 5.0 related work which we are keep on supporting it look okay what if the master is from 4 dot what if the master is from 5 dot we don't want to maintain that anymore because nobody is actually having on still on 4 dot x so we have removed completely so if you're still using 4 dot something 5 dot 0 we are not going to support it anymore so that's for the maintenance and uh, as you know we are open source we uh, we take the contributions from many people so we just wanted to say thank you for these people who are actually contributed a lot of things. So in case if you want to contribute, go to bugs.mysql.com or you, when you face some issue, in case if you are able to f figure out that what is the issue that is happening, you just have to sign some agreement and then put your patch. If you figure out that there is no issues at all with your patch, we will take it and then we will give you the credits to you. Yeah, so if you can't wait to upload, to download the 8.0 so 
this is where you can download this is where you can read the more the information and a uh, lot of developers will write the moment the feature is released we will write a very good blog and then it will be there here and as i said if you find some issues feel free to put it here and if you have already a patch feel free to put it there yeah thank you Yes. Kind of three questions. So sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, you mentioned. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, no, no. You, uh, you mentioned that uh, you can you can have you, you are having hooks in the, uh, in the replication. Correct. So is it is it layer seven or does it have any sort of like networking layers uh, layer uh, layer seven? Does it have any sort of uh, correlation with uh, uh, layer six or like uh, TCP port? No, it's just that when is it when it is received, there will be an in-memory uh, buffer that we maintain, saying that it is here. And then the performance schema, when somebody executes a particular query, we read it from that in-memory buffer that this is the place, this is the time that is received, and we will display it to you. So it's application layer, complete application layer. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, second is what is second question. Skip to the third one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so you, you mentioned the per channel. Uh, Correct. Right? Yeah. What's the isolation level of that? Is it at the level of database? Or is it at the level of a table? Or is it at the level yeah, we, we have. Uh, if, from the legacy, from 5.1, we do have, from the DB, uh, you can actually say ignore DB. You can even say ignore table. So we have till the table level. We cannot say column level, but till DB, there is a do DB, there is an ignore DB. There is even, you can even mention wildcards, the regular expressions you can even mention. Like uh, you don't want anything that starts with DB, you can say DB star. You can say wild do, uh, ignore DB. You can mention the wildcards there. So that level is there, it's not a new feature in 8.0. Even in 5556, you can do a, a DB level, you can even table level as well. The only thing that we added in 8.0 is that per channel thing. It was a global level. All the channels, are getting affected if you just set it on one on the replica. So that is what we have changed it. Per channel, you can actually mention. So that's all. Uh, I, I do have a second um, you, you mentioned the binary log, right? Is it queryable? Can you query the binary log for audit purposes? Yes. Show bin log events is the way the command that will give you all the information. But you should have. Sorry? It's human readable. Yes, yes. It's human readable. But of course, if you are a row, if you are on the RBR, it's not a human readable. But there is a variable called bin log row query log events. You have to enable it for you to for us to write the query into the binary log. Some people doesn't want that query to be for whatever security reasons or whatever it is. So, but if even in the RBR, if you want the query to be seen from the show bin log events, then you have to mention a variable called bin log row query log events. So the query log even query events also will be returned to the binary log. If you have rated it like that, then we will say in the comments there will you will see insert into T1 followed by the row format that. So the row format is obviously is not a human readable, but you have a query there. Show bin log events is the command, but for show bin log events to be executed, you need some certain privileges. And not, any anybody cannot execute that. For the security reasons, obviously. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mike.